As a missionary in Latin America, I do a lot of my work in Spanish. Many of my daily interactions take place in Spanish. I started learning the language in seventh grade um, and continue learning it in school. So I have kind of a grammatical foundation um, approach to it. And when I thought of the higher things theme for you, I, my brain immediately went to two little words, two prepositions that are the bane of every Spanish for students existence. Por and para. If you have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about, um, I'll give you a, a, a brief little tutorial. Um, both of these words are often translated as for, but they have other nuances of meaning. Para, P-A-R-A, -A, is used less often um, and also often means in order to, by, as in a deadline, or according to. Things are generally happening sequentially when we're using para, and there's a sense of a, a final goal or a destination. And then if we look at por, P-O-R, some of its other meanings are because of, through, via, like by, by way of, over, per, instead of. Um, things are generally happening simultaneously, and, and there's a sense of motion. So there's your, your short little Spanish lesson for the day. Um, and and where, I wanna, where I wanna go with this is that Cristo es para ti and Cristo es por ti. He's both. Christ is for you in every sense of both of those words. Um, we're going to take a look at one of the most popular Spanish Bible translations um, and some of the things and, and people um, and gifts that are for us. So starting with para, um, that way back in the Old Testament, God says, for I know the plans I have for you. That's in Jeremiah. We are the recipient of that gift of God's good plans, um, and we are ultimately the recipient of his best gift, his son, Jesus Christ. Um, in Acts, we hear that uh, his kingdom is being prepared for us and that he is preparing a place for us. Jesus is preparing a place for us where he is going. Um, redemption is for us through him. That's in Hebrews 9. And because of his resurrection, we also will rise on the last day. And that's referred to as, quote, something better in Hebrews 11, just two chapters later. You might know that better as the great faith chapter. Then if we look at instances uh, of poor, of Christ being for us, um, in a sense of, in a sense of poor, in our place, in our stead, Immediately, we go to the substitutionary atonement. Um, it should have been us on that cross, bleeding and dying, but it wasn't. It was Jesus. Um, so throughout the Gospels, um, the words of institution use poor. Christ talks about his body and blood being given and shed for us um, in our place. And then Paul, throughout his epistles, Romans, Ephesians, 2 Corinthians, 1 Thessalonians, and Titus talk about how Christ loved us and died for us or gave himself up for us. Too many instances to even list. And now that Christ has ascended to the right hand of the Father, the Holy Spirit is interceding for us. That's in Romans twice. So if you didn't fall asleep or turn this video off, when I started talking about grammar, um, just remember that, that Christ is for you in every sense of that word. He is por ti and he is para ti. And on account of your baptism, he is also with you, beside you, before you, behind you, and working through you to let others know that he is for them also. What do you value? At Concordia University, Nebraska, we value the equipping of church workers for lives of service to both church and world. In a culture where our faith can often be met with derision, our world needs ardent Christian leaders to rise to the helm and steer the next generation of Christ followers into new territory. You have the God-given gifts. We have the tools to uncover and develop them. We are Nebraska's university with values.